Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group YouTube channel. I'm Ian, G0VGS. Well, the Ofcom document is out along with a draft license from the consultation that was announced earlier this year. And I'm not going to go through the whole document. It's a good 103 pages. Uh, but I'm going to focus on something that's very close to our hearts here in Northwest Fusion Group and Northwest All Star Group for that matter, um, as well as a lot of other people and that's repeaters and gateways now the whole thing isn't totally clear yet um, there's still some consultation going on um, but what I can do is try and give you an accurate representation of where we expect to be by the end of February so let's have a closer look the headline news around this of course is that uh, anybody's going to be able to set up a repeater or a gateway uh, with an ERP of 5 watts or less. Um, that's not strictly true. Uh, so we're going to go through this in detail and try and strip it down a bit so that you can understand exactly uh, what's going on. So we're going to have a look at repeaters first. In the draft license uh, that's at the bottom of this 103 page document, uh, there's a whole section on repeaters. And you can see here that repeaters can only be operated by intermediate or full licensees or club licenses. So where this is an intermediate, full, full club or full temporary reciprocal license, the radio equipment may be used as a repeater and may be operated but not controlled by other radio amateurs without supervision, providing that the licensee a transmits in accordance with any restrictions as notified by Ofcom. B ensures that the repeater transmits at powers no greater than 5 watts ERP. C does not operate in a frequency band below 28 megahertz. D is able to demonstrate that reasonable steps have been taken to minimize the risk of the repeater causing undue interference to other authorized users of radio and provide evidence of this if requested by Ofcom. E is able to close down the repeater within two hours of being required to do so by Ofcom. F takes all reasonable steps to ensure that the repeater is only used by an amateur and G remains responsible for the operation of the repeater and compliance with the terms and conditions and limitations of the license. So the key point there is repeaters can only be operated by intermediate and full licensees. The next section, point 16, doesn't specifically state it, but it looks very much as if this is put in place for when a notice of variation is issued. Where this is a full, full club or full temporary reciprocal license, the radio equipment may be used as a repeater station at powers greater than 5 watts, but no more than 25 watts ERP, providing that the licensee transmits in accordance with any restrictions as notified by Ofcom, does not operate in a frequency band below 28 MHz, ensures that the repeater is identified using the call sign allocated and published by the Radio Society of Great Britain or any other body stipulated by Ofcom for that purpose. D is able to demonstrate that reasonable steps have been taken to minimise the risk of repeater causing undue interference to other authorised users of radio and provide evidence of this if requested by Ofcom. E is able to close down the repeater within two hours of being required to do so by Ofcom. F takes all reasonable steps to ensure that the repeater is only used by an amateur and G remains responsible for the operation of the repeater and compliance with the terms, conditions and limitations of the license. The key point there is C. It ensures that the repeater is identified using the call sign allocated and published by the Radio Society of Great Britain or any other body stipulated by Ofcom for that purpose. 
That, to me, says that it's a call sign that's been issued, as in a notice of variation. So this appears to cover the notice of variation. So our repeaters can only be operated by intermediate or full licensees with 5 watts or less. Gateways are open to everybody. So let's have a look at the wording around gateways. Gateway operation. The radio equipment may be used as a gateway and may be operated but not controlled by other radio amateurs without supervision, providing that the licensee A ensures that the gateway transmits at powers no greater than 5 watts ERP and B is able to demonstrate that reasonable steps have been taken to minimise the risk of the gateway causing undue interference to other authorised users of the radio and provide evidence of this if requested by Ofcom. C takes all reasonable steps to ensure that the gateway is only used by an amateur and D is able to close down the gateway within two hours of being required to do so by Ofcom. E remains responsible for the operation of the gateway and compliance with the terms, conditions of limitations of the license. And F, anyone wishing to establish a link to a repeater must have the written permission of the repeater keeper in order to do so. So, all well and good. If we're a primary user of the band, then you can set up a gateway uh, at any license class with up to 5 watts ERP. And that means that you've got to take into account any losses in the feeder and any gain in the antenna, of course. And if you're unsure how to calculate this, there are websites that allow you to do it. Interestingly, there are no restrictions on the height of the antenna. So, on 2 metres, you're good to go. As long as you're not causing interference to any other radio users, you can set up your repeater or gateway happy days. The problem comes when we go to a secondary band like 70 centimetres. A 70 centimetres where secondary allocation, the primary user is the Ministry of Defence. So in order for us to operate a repeater on 70 centimetres, we have to get frequency clearance. And that's stated in the draft licence. Deployment of a repeater in this band is subject to coordination with the Ministry of Defence. Licensees must have clearance from Ofcom before operating a repeater. Now interestingly, it doesn't mention gateways at all. So I queried this because after all, a transmission on a secondary band is a transmission on a secondary band. So I checked with Ofcom and the response I got was, we will be releasing further guidance when we make our final decision to vary the licenses. We are currently in ongoing discussions with the MOD and CAA concerning clearance requests. At present, the existing rules on accessing these bands continue to apply going forward. Now, if that's the case, you're also going to have to apply for frequency clearance on 70 centimetres for a gateway. There's another factor to take into consideration with the 70 centimetres band, and that is currently for a gateway, you cannot operate unattended. You can only have attended gateways on 70 centimetres, regardless of your license class. I'd like to put a caveat in here. Uh, there's a temptation, isn't there, to um, get the hotspot you've been using for years, put it on your main station antenna, and go and take the dog for a walk and have a chat while you're doing it. There are several problems with that. First and foremost, the vast majority of hotspots will only support UHF. And as we've just discussed, you cannot use UHF without frequency clearance and you cannot have it unattended. The other thing is, assuming that you're able to find a hotspot that operates on VHF, Hotspots are designed to work with a compromise antenna and at very low powers. They are not well filtered, the spectral purity is somewhat limited, and you may well have problems if you try and do this. Um, it's not the best way to make friends and influence people, let me put it that way. 
I strongly suggest that you don't try and put a hotspot on a main station antenna. They are wide open and you could get all kinds of problems just on receive, regardless of the spectral purity of your transmission. But the main thing to remember is that you cannot operate currently a gateway on 70 centimeters without frequency clearance. Of course, none of this happens until the end of February anyway, so don't think you can just start doing it now because the document's out. It's only a draft license. They expect to have the license uh, actually in law by uh, about February the 21st, which will wait and see if that slips. But certainly some interesting changes, and there's plenty of other interesting stuff in there as well. I do recommend that you read it. I shall put a link in the description. If you've got any comments, I'd be glad to read them. It's always good to see your comments. And until the next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio.